Hi, I'm Daniel from Ratings.com. In this video, we'll go over how to set up and get the best picture for the Samsung MU6300. These settings are also valid for the Samsung MU6290, which offers the same performance, but without a smart remote or voice control. We will describe the settings you should adjust for gaming, HDR, and movies. For a summary of our recommended settings, see the link in the description to our website. Now, unlike the higher-end Samsung TVs, all of the inputs are located on the side of the TV. If you have an external sound system which supports an audio return channel or ARC, then you should connect it to HDMI 3, and this will allow you to route the audio from any apps or other HDMI sources through your external speakers. Unlike last year's KU6300, all of the inputs to this TV are otherwise identical, so connect your sources to any of them. If you've got older devices which support component or composite outputs, then you can connect them with these included adapters. When you connect an input, the TV will try to identify what it is and change to the appropriate input icon and label. This usually works well, but if you're using a PC and want to ensure support for Chroma 444, then you can go to the home menu and press up on your device. You can then select the corresponding PC icon. This is the only icon which affects the picture quality, the rest are all cosmetic. If you've connected any newer or high bandwidth devices, such as the Xbox One X or PS4 Pro, then you'll want to adjust the bandwidth of the HDMI port. To do so with the MU6300 Smart Remote, you can hold the voice button on the remote and say HDMI UHD Color. This also works well for setting the remainder of the settings shown in this video. If you prefer to use the buttons or have the MU6290 with a standard remote, then you can press the home button on the remote and go to settings, general, external device manager, HDMI UHD color. You can activate this option for all of your HDMI inputs, but if you find compatibility issues with older devices, then you can disable it. For the remainder of this video, we will look only at the MU6300, but note that all of the recommended settings are identical. If we press the return button on the remote to go up a menu, then there is an option for game mode. Enable this setting to bring the input lag down to around 20 milliseconds for gaming. Some picture processing options are disabled, but you can still follow the remainder of this guide. Depending on your device, the HDMI black level setting may not be available. This setting corresponds to the video range of the input device. If it is incorrect, then it results in crushed dark scenes or a raised black level and loss of contrast. For the best results, it should almost always be left at auto. Now, we'll go up a menu and disable the Eco Solutions settings. These settings cause the brightness to adjust automatically, which can be distracting if it doesn't quite adjust as you prefer. Now, under Picture, adjust the Picture Mode. The most accurate picture mode is Movie, and it also allows the most setting customization, so is the one that we recommend. The rest of the picture settings are in the Expert Settings menu. To see the effect of the backlight option, we will be using white level measurements taken on a checkerboard pattern of our MU6300. Increasing the backlight increases the overall screen brightness without reducing the picture quality. You should adjust this to suit your room. But for our room with some lights on, we'll set it to 13, which corresponds to a brightness of about 200 nits. If you're watching HDR content, then you should set the backlight to maximum to produce the brightest highlights. To see the effect of the brightness slider, we can measure the gamma curve, which shows the relationship between dark and bright areas. A high gamma value results in deeper dark scenes, and a lower value results in a brighter overall image. The left-hand side of the plot affects darker scenes, while the right-hand side affects bright scenes. For example, a high gamma value towards the left-hand side of the plot results in deeper dark scenes, but may result in loss of details in a bright room. Unlike most other TVs, the brightness slider on 2017 Samsung TVs affects the gamma of dark areas. You can increase the brightness to bring out dark scene details or decrease it for a deeper image. 
we leave this to the default value of zero, as it is closest to the standard that movies are mastered at, which is a flat gamma of 2.2 across the range. The contrast option affects the brightness range and contrast of the display. This should be set as high as possible without losing details in highlights. The default value of 95 provides a good brightness range without loss of details. A sharpness setting of zero results in no added sharpness. If you're watching lower quality content and don't mind sharpening artifacts, then you can increase it slightly, but too high values will result in artifacts such as ringing around edges. To identify the best value for the color setting, we can measure the colors of the TV and compare them to a reference target. We will display these results on a CIE XY diagram, where squares on the diagram show what a calibrated display should achieve, such as the reference display that the content was mastered on. Circles on this diagram show our measurements of the MU6300. We can see that increasing the color past 50 causes the TV to oversaturate colors as the measurements lie outside of the target. Decreasing the color results in a bland or washed out image as the measurement points undershoot their saturation targets. The default value of 50 is best for an accurate image. The tint setting adjusts the balance between green and red, which has the effect of rotating colors on the CIE XY diagram as shown. The default value with equal amounts of green and red is the most accurate. Setting apply picture settings to all sources causes the display settings to be universal and applied across all inputs. Setting it to current source allows you to change these picture adjustments on an input by input basis. If you prefer a brighter image when gaming, for example, you can use different settings for a Blu-ray player and for a console. For most people, it is best to use the same settings across all inputs. If you're watching low quality content, such as DVDs or cable, then you can enable digital clean view to reduce noise. You should disable this for high quality content though, to avoid softening the image. The Auto Motion Plus settings menu is for motion interpolation and image flicker options. To learn more about how these affect the motion performance, see the videos linked in the description. These settings aren't available in game or PC mode to avoid adding input lag. If you enjoy the soap opera effect when watching movies, then select the custom option and increase judder reduction to two or three. This TV has a 60 Hertz panel, and so this is the maximum frame rate that content can be interpolated to. LED clear motion flickers the backlight to clear up motion. If you're watching sports or other fast motion, then you can activate this. However, the resulting flicker is distracting to some people and it does decrease the overall screen brightness. Contrast Enhancer affects the relationship between dark and bright areas of a scene. You should disable it for the most accurate image. The HDR Plus option doesn't enable HDR, but instead changes the TV settings to provide a brighter and more saturated image. If you prefer a more vivid image, then you can enable this option, but if you want to match the director's intent, then you should leave it disabled for a more accurate image. Film mode is only available with certain input signals, such as 1080i sources. If this option is available and you're watching a movie such as from cable TV, then activate this. We can see the effect of color tone on the CIE XY diagram. Cooler values causes all the colors to shift down and towards the left towards blue. Warmer values look yellow or reddish. We calibrate to the standard 6500 Kelvin color temperature which movies are mastered at, which corresponds to a value of warm too but you can adjust this to your preference. For more pop, choose a cooler value. The white balance menu contains advanced adjustments to the white point at different brightnesses. These require measurement equipment to set accurately. You can find our values in the review for reference, but we don't recommend copying them as the best values vary on a unit by unit basis. When the TV detects different content metadata, it will automatically switch the gamma option to the correct value. 
For hybrid log gamma content, this will default to HLG. For HDR10 or Dolby Vision content, it changes to ST2084. And for SDR content, the correct value is BT1886. We can also measure the effect of the gamma slider. Increasing the value results in a lower gamma curve, which increases the overall brightness of the image and brings out details in dark scenes. A lower value increases the curve and produces deeper dark scenes, but may crush details in a bright room. You can increase the slider in a bright room, but we use a value of 1 as it is closest to our 2.2 target. The RGB only mode setting filters the primary colors of the image for calibration by eye. The color space setting affects the target color space. The custom value allows for calibration of the color space, but this requires advanced measurement equipment to set correctly and the best values change from unit to unit. This TV doesn't support a wide color gamma, so the native setting doesn't expand the total color space, but instead oversaturates intermediate points. For accurate colors, set this to auto for both SDR and HDR content. So that's it. You can find the screenshots of all of the settings we recommend on our website via the link below. And if you like this video, subscribe to our channel or become a contributor. Thanks for watching and see you next time.